Welcome back to another edition of WFO's 12 Rigs of Christmas and Where Are They Now? So this is John's budget YJ, and you may recognize it from last year's 12 Rigs of Christmas. John works for WFO, and he is our sales guy up front that deals with all the Toyota and the custom suspension, three-link, four-link side of uh, selling parts. So if you want to build something like this, he's the one you want to talk to. So what, what's this vehicle? Let's refresh their memories from last yeah, year. Yeah, this is my 91 YJ, well, 90, 91 YJ. Bought it as a running, driving, four-cylinder Jeep, bone stock. Um, even in today's market, it was still a good deal, and I turned it into a one-ton long wheelbase. How long did it take you to finish the build? Because last year, just to give you a heads up of where we were last year, it was kind of a roller. We had to push it out of the garage. It wasn't driving like it is now. Um, and how long did it take you to build it? I built this in six months. So six months, which those of you at home don't expect to build your rig in six months he does work at a parts house you know i used to walk by his desk and he'd be in there ordering his own parts and getting his own stuff ready for his build to take home at night all in the name of r d trevor all, all in the name of r d um but a project like this the reason why we're showing you guys this jeep again is when you're building your stuff at home don't expect to just get it done overnight you got to be patient you got to get the right parts you got to get the right stuff for the build and that's exactly what you did, right, John? It was gather the parts and then start building. Now, I see everyone all the time, they're like, oh, I got my rig cut apart in the garage, and then they start getting parts. That's like the worst way to do it. You want to call ahead, talk to John, talk to Tyler. They'll set you up with a way to succeed before you start. You don't want to take it apart first. I mean, the day he cut this thing apart, he had all the stuff he was going to use sitting on the garage floor, including you had the axles already built, right? The axles were built 100% ready to go. Yeah, so we'll give you a quick refresher on this, but... This is a example of what they look like when you actually follow through and finish your project. And I'm really proud of John for doing this. So first off, John, show them under the hood real quick. Yeah, of course. So tell us about the engine, John. Yeah, so it started life as a uh, six liter cam bit like nice ported heads. So like, Gen 3 LS. Yeah, yeah, really nice parts. Uh, Unfortunately, that engine decided to spin a lifter the two hours after it started running. And you got to expect this kind of stuff too. So he buys a junkyard engine. Everybody tells him it's a good engine. The guy in Craigslist seemed like a real straight shooter. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> and uh, you fired it up. What happened? Yeah, spun the lifter, killed the cam. Basically, it, I mean, it didn't completely yard out the engine, but uh, it made it to the point where it just wasn't usable. And then how'd you find another engine? I went on good old eBay. <laughs> this is a 5.3, Gen 3, 5.3 liter bone stock though. There is it, nothing done to this. This thing had a Krylon rebuild when you got it from eBay, right? That's right. Yeah. Literally spray painted over the oil. So it was another gamble, but it was cheap, right? Yeah, it was really, really cheap. And like I said, it was a gamble, but it was low mileage. So it seemed good, but to be honest with you, it actually runs great. So it, it runs great now. And uh, when it was warm outside, it's cold now, but John would drive it to work every Friday down Highway 49 back it in and it's always great to see somebody finish their project and get it done so real quick underneath the hood we won't spend all their time but single optimal no battery you have our center dump speed master headers right here that we use and we always weld a v-band on the bottom That's actually right. no i'm lying you got those off I eBay. Bought, i bought mine with already done with v-bands yep. yep uh two and a half inch king coilovers yep 14 inch travel yep. um got a strut tower coming across here and then this is our universal uh coilover mount that we sell, correct? Yes, it's a hoop, yep. not a tower. Uh, simple LS style radiator, and you got a dual pass on here. Yeah, so this is a dual pass. This is by Superior Radiator. And dual pass, if you notice, the upper inlet and the lower inlet are on the same side. Yeah. So it really makes it easy for your hoses and, and fitment. Electric yeah. fan. Let's uh, pan down. So at the front, you got a VR 10,000 in there now. Didn't yep. have a winch last year. Um, not really a bumper, just capped it off, really simple. <laughs> yep. And then underneath, Tell us about that. Yeah, so this is our two inch 250 wall tie rod actually made for the 05 and up Dana 60. Um, uses one inch bolts, inch and a quarter heims on the outers. And then I have a single ended PSC steering system, full hydraulic. And steering. that's something different. Everybody wants to do 
a uh, dual-ended ram, yep. and a lot of times we say, forget about the double-ended ra double ram, let's go single, and it makes it so much easier. So if you take a look, that's a single two and a half inch diameter PSC yep. ram. It's just two tabs off of the truss or a mount off the truss and two tabs on the tie rod. Yeah, I actually got really creative with one of our hydro assist mounts and I actually cut it down and put it sideways on the truss. Yep. yep. And that is also our 05 and up uh, truss as well, yes, right? Yes, it is. That's our low profile truss. So let me ask you this. Who cut all the brackets off of that 05 Dana 60? <laughs> Blake at work cut them all off for me. It was... And what do you think that took him? How many hours? Um, he did it in four hours, but it was rough. So any of you guys at home that want to take one of these real portable Super Duty front axles and cut all the factory radius arm mounts okay. off, be ready. It's going to take at least, you know, oh, six it, hours it, or so at home with a and torch and a grinder. That was with a plasma cutter and that was with a bandsaw in the shop. I think at home, realistically, it's a, it's a solid Saturday of... And where do you have, so this is a three link, right? Yes, it is. And so your three link mounts over on the driver's side? Yes, it's on the top of the axle. So three link mount right here, top of the axle. And then what Heim joint are you using on that? That's an inch and a half quarter wall upper? That is a inch and three quarter 120 wall upper. Oh, okay, yep. And then you're running, uh, what do you run up there? Oh, inch and a quarter Heims as well. Yep. So those are all the link mounts that we sell. You can see our lower link mount for the truss down there on the axle. Um, and just our regular coilover mounts. Yeah, and to as stay well. and to stay budget, as everyone can see, and everyone's going to point out, that is a Toyota driveline up front. <laughs> <laughs> For the fact to stay budget, you already had a Toyota uh, drive. It was shop. literally sitting in my yard. So we sell that Toyota flange as well, yeah, that's which is our... awesome to put on yep. a Dana 60 because it gets super high angle that's when right. it flexes. Yeah, right? that's not, a lot of people bag on Toyota drivelines. They're actually pretty strong. And then what tube fenders do you have? Flat fenders you have on these here? are Poison Spider uh, three inch fenders in the front. And uh, real quick while we're right here, factory YJ brake yes. booster, right? Yeah. And then this is that master cylinder we sell. That's, the... a, that's a Grand Marquis master. Oh, Grand Marquis master cylinder. Yeah. Okay. And the brakes work great, huh? They work awesome. All right. Well, let's see. Let's take a look inside. It is uh, bare bones inside. Nothing too fancy, no. right? So <laughs> I think you traded for this roll cage, right? I did. I, I did some trade work, got this roll cage from a guy. Couple Corbo seats yep. and then Turbo 400? Uh, it's a 4L60E. Oh, that's right. You do yep. have the 4L60E, yep. And what kind of injection are you running on this? What kind of computer? So this is a uh, Phytech system. Phytech, okay. Yep. Um, and then moved your fuel cell to the back, Yep. right? Yep, opted then, to do that instead of doing underneath the bed. I, I It's a little open-ended still with this Jeep. Like I don't, one day I might change it, so this is the easiest But it's solution. running, driving, wheeling, and working. That's and right. of course you added that ice chest rack to the back. Yeah, I think right? there's more R&D in my ice chest rack than any other piece of this Jeep. Andrew <laughs> built that for you, right? <laughs> yeah. He did a hell of a job, the old school ice chest. So uh, what kind of wheelbase are you running on this thing? So I'm running a 110 inch wheelbase, which speaking of Andrew, that's one inch longer than his Forerunner. Can you believe that? The inch longer wheelbase than you Andrew's Forerunner. You know what they say, every inch matters. It does. Sorry, Andrew. <laughs> um, on the rear end, leaf springs. What kind of leaf springs you got on? So there? these are out of a. Uh, these are XJ springs, so out of Cherokee springs. Now they're a bastard pack. I they were a little too flimsy when I first put them in. And it's bolted right into the factory mount on the YJ, right? <laughs> factory YJ front factory hanger. spring hanger right there on the frame. Yep. With an XJ spring, which moved the wheelbase way back. Oh yeah, it's like six or seven inches in the room. Which is why you had to put the fuel cell in the back. Yep. Um, and then take a look, keep it nice and low. Ran our shackle hanger off the back of the bumper. Yep, to a six-inch um, kit with four-inch shackles to keep it low to the ground. Yep, and then uh, Sterling rear end. Yep, uh, with you know leaf springs, always need a torque arm. So always you're running a WFO torque arm on there. Yep, um, but this is the type of project that anybody can buy. You know, a bunch of parts, a couple axles, some tires and wheels. Absolutely, Craigslist their items, eBay their items, um, and actually see the end to the project. Yep. Start it and finish it, and that's yeah. what you did, right? Yeah. There's not a whole lot of fancy parts on this thing, but it works, so it, it just flat out it's works. It's an awesome rig, and the fact of the matter is, I love when you show up at work and back it in out front. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's always the pulling in and pulling out is the funnest part of it. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll keep it on the down low that he's running with a little single-ended full hydro. Let's just say it takes the back roads, Yep. Um, yep. but it does work well. Fire roads all the time. Fire roads, yep. Yeah. Uh, and it does sound awesome, right? Yep. Oh yeah, I love to hear him get on the freeway leaving work on a Friday. Oh yeah. Um, we tried to have him do a burnout a couple times, and what happened? Why didn't that burnout work out? <laughs> the suspension's so soft in the rear, it just lifted. Oh, 
what an ugly burnout, <laughs> but you know, sounded good, but just, oh man, you know, so hopefully we can get a little more footage next yeah. year of you on the trail. You've only had it on the trail one time. One time. See, uh, yeah. here's the other thing too. My, my whole build for this Jeep, I had to get it done in a certain amount of time. I was having another kid. Yeah. So the moment I had my kid, I mean, you guys all knew I had to have this thing running and driving by then. Well, there's something else I want to show you really quick because he did have another kid, so he had to get this out of the garage. Yeah. But right after the other kid, you put something else in the garage. I did. I did all sneak right. another project in. Let's walk in and check that all out. All right. So I don't recommend all you uh, dads doing this at home, <laughs> but as soon as the second kid came and the Jeep was out of the garage, this is what you did. Yeah, so this this is one of those projects where it's a spur of the moment. My uh, wife's uncle gifted me a 1987 RX-7. And it was complete. It was a complete- Barn find. 100% barn find. He is the original owner. He drove it all the way to the year 2000 when it started making some weird engine sales. It's rotary, let's all be real. Yeah. He parked it and never looked at it ever again. Hashtag rotary. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> uh, you're not dealing with rotary anymore. No, right? no spinning Doritos for me. So this is how you know that we have the right parts guy at WFO is he can put that together with a list of parts and then, you know, somehow keep his wife still married to him <laughs> and, you know, deal with taking care of the kids and then squeeze something like this right in the garage but be able to take on this kind of project. I mean, not many people could take an LS, throw it under the hood of an RX-7, get the drive line to hook up, get the wire to hook yeah. up, and make this happen in your garage on jack stands. Yeah. And you can do that. And that's why I know that he's the right guy to be on our team, because when you call up and you want stuff, he's out there doing it every night. So he, knows, right. he knows what you're doing. This is my preach moment. For everyone that always calls us, and they always say like, man, I don't have a shop, I don't know what I can do. I literally do everything in a single car garage. Yeah, and you do stands. it. And I, I get it done. You build Jeeps, you build hot rods, you build cars, and this is, the, the Jeep was like your what? Tenth vehicle to build in yeah, the garage? Yeah, absolutely. You know, bunch of Tacomas, bunch of really nice rigs he's built at home. So that's why he can say, this is how we're gonna do it, this is what we're gonna do. Right. So what's the engine in this? Okay, so this is a Iron Block 5.3 Gen 3, but this has got my ported heads, it's got a big choppy Brian Tooley cam in it. This thing is ready to go. This is this was a truck 5.3, but you got a car intake. Yeah, so on this it. is LS6 intake, LS6 injectors, and then is that factory Camaro exhaust manifold? So those are actually uh, those are uh, Summit branded, basically cast manifolds. They're like LS3. Uh huh. Manifold. So it's a nice, tight, regular manifold. Yeah, they hug the block. They actually it looks fit like perfect. there's tons of room for the exhaust over here. Tons. Yeah. Okay. And then your radiator. Yeah. Um, so this is a full radiator kit I built myself. So this is my fan shroud I built. They're Mishimoto 10 inch race fans. Okay. So it's about 4,000 CFM out of those two fans. Nice. So electric fan, then what transmission you put so in? So I this? actually did a uh, newer Camaro. This is out of a 2012 Camaro. This is a TR6060 six speed manual. You could peek in here, check this out. Yeah. Man, the interior's cherry in this thing. <laughs> so you got the six speed to come right up through the, the yeah. same place. I where... utilized a Siki shifter. And this was a manual car to begin with. It was right? a manual car. This is actually a turbo too to start with. So it was a turbo rotary. Yeah, it was actually a very rare car yeah. to start with. So imagine that. That's a lot of hashtags. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Turbski. Um, but that's gone. That's out of here. Yeah, that's gone. Yeah. So the seats are absolutely in perfect shape. The interior is in perfect shape. How many miles were on this car? This mo car only has 100,000 miles. 100,000 miles. And when is your goal to get this project started? How, how long ago did you start? Um, I started September 3rd because I had a date when I could start it for my wife. Yeah. And then it has to be done by March. Uh, so I think you're going to do it. You're getting close. I got exhaust. I'm just have to do my exhaust, wire it, and it'll be running. Yeah. Well, awesome. I can't wait to see this on the road, even though it has nothing to do with rock crawling and four wheel drive, but like every guy that has a, a, a rock crawler or a Jeep has, has a hot rod or a fast That's car. That's right. I'm, I have very many hobbies. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed John's RX seven and, uh, our edition of where are they now with his YJ and, uh, Check us out on the next one. Remember, 12 rigs of Christmas, 12% off. Get it. <laughs> things, things got a little weird. Son of a motherfucker. Hold on.
start over. <laughs> edition of WFL 